here we are. Peter Levshin, Brad Toms, Troy Miller, for IEPPV, we're gonna be talking about travel photography, right? Traveling, traveling the world, photographing. Now, as, as you and I have discussed, Peter, let's look at this from the beginning, sort of the inception of, hey, I wanna to travel to a faraway country, and then let's talk about like what kind of gear you need to take and the challenges that you found um, along the way. But before we do that, introduce yourself, tell me a little bit about who you are. I, I know who you are, but not everybody else does. Well, all the important people know who I am. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm Peter Levshin, and I do travel photography and portrait photography from around the world. And basically, I like to go to places where people haven't been, or remote, or places that you haven't seen the photos before. And the unfortunate thing about doing that, Mr. Miller, is the reason that those images are hard to get is because they are remote places, difficult, and physically difficult, and we'll get to that later on, but it's very challenging. And that's why I now have my very best friend, second best friend, Brad Toms, to go with me to help me, because I'm old, and he will help me. Nice. But just to get to back to some of your credentials, you are a Professional Photographers of America master photographer? Yes. You've been on the cover of PPA Magazine? Yes, I have twice. Uh, you have a gallery in San Ana called Pack Artists? Pack Artists Gallery. From your artist collection? Yep. And um, this is going to be my third year at the Festival of Arts in Laguna Beach. Right. And it's an invitation only, uh, 120 artists, so I'm very very proud and happy to be back doing that again and um, enjoy photography immensely. I love photography. And so, so you've accomplished a few things. You've done some, some stuff. You've I've got a lot of things images. to do. Yeah. yeah. I've got a few. Yeah. Yeah. A few. Yeah. We'll make sure that we show some images in this video. So Thank you. some of your good ones. Okay. And then, and then our good friend Brad over here, tell us a little bit about you, where you are in your photographic journey. Sure. And maybe how it is that you, know myself and Peter. All right. Well, as you said, my name is Brad Toms. I'm a actually a fairly new photographer. I've been doing photography for six years. And I met uh, Troy and Peter both through IEPPV. Uh, and um, and in, in, through that introduction, I've uh, had the opportunity to travel with Peter to Indonesia, and we spent uh, several weeks there. And, and um, it was outstanding, and since then we've done some, some what I, I would call local trips through the United States, and uh, had some fun with that. Um, primarily landscape uh, travel photography, um, maybe some photojournalism for myself. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Good. And and you both are shooting Sony gear, right? Yes. Perfect. I'm shooting Nikon gear, so we'll talk a little bit about gear a little bit later in the episode because I think it's important that everybody kind of understands like gear is fun. We have lots of gear here. But it isn't the most important thing that, that, that we're going to address, too. Let's go ahead and just kind of jump into why we're here and what we want to talk about. So, Peter, you're kind of the, you're kind of the, the, the grandfather of destination photography and traveling. I mean, but seriously, though, I've known you for quite a while, and I know that you have traveled many, many, many countries far and wide. So tell me a little bit about what countries you've been to and what got you to go to these countries? Wow, okay. That's a great question. Um, I haven't been to anywhere in South America, and that's probably the only places, other than Africa, the only places I haven't been to. So what interested me, and I started this probably 35, 40 years ago, was working in China, and then having free time in China then to travel around Asia, and uh, to take photography. I didn't take photography seriously until about 10 years ago. And um, it was difficult, long and hard because at that time I thought I was a great photographer until I started comparing myself in competitions and other, you know, uh, hanging out with other people and so on. But what I enjoy is going to a destination to see things I haven't seen before and coming back with images 
and working on the images and looking at it and going, oh, this is fantastic, and sharing it with my friends and sharing it with other people and obviously entering it into competition and selling the artwork. And what I do enjoy is selling artwork to people that actually enjoy the same thing that I take. It's been very rewarding and it's the only thing that keeps me going is to have a trip planned and enjoy the people, the destination, travel with somebody that's not a complete pain in the ass and it, he enjoys going, easy going, and we eat and travel through places, meet lots of great people and have the experience of a lifetime. So why, why travel? Why not, why not stay in, in the US? Why not go there? Why travel outside the country? What, what motivates you to want to travel outside the country? And what, how do you pick that location? Uh, well, so my motivation might be a little different than, than Peter's. I mean, I've been uh, working professionally for the last 30 years and, you know, not really able to go anywhere and do anything because of my job mm -hmm. keeping me local. And, 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 and mind you, you know, we've, I've seen some amazing, I mean, there's incredible, incredible places to go to in the United States to get amazing photographs. However, being a member of IEPPV and kind of seeing the photographs that are being presented at uh, ImageConf and all that stuff, and then chatting with Peter and him talking about, you know, going to Indonesia and, and you know, Bali and all these different locations and seeing the types of photographs that we could get outside of this country, I said, like, oh, that, I'm all in for that. I, I'd nice. love to do that. So for me, that, that was my motivation to get outside this country and see things that I have not seen before. So nice. that's why. So Peter, you have an image of some trees. It's a, it's a pano, Q image. Um, tell me about those trees. Cause I know that, that you were, you're kind of obsessed with trees and I know that you planned for a long time for that one particular trip. And then you guys just recently did a trip together that, that included some trees. So let, let's start with that. Like, should, tell me the process about how you saw this image and what, what, what you had to go through to get there. Um, yeah. Basically, I'm a photojournalist photographer, and I like to take pictures of uh, monks and temples and people and so on. And that's really difficult nowadays to actually do because it's just getting harder and harder, lots more restrictions getting to places. And I thought, well, you know what, why don't I just take the easy way out and do landscape? <laughs> I mean, you know, really, how hard is it to take landscape? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Yeah, I know, I know. Anyway, <laughs> well, landscape will be... How hard is it, but how dangerous? Oh, okay, and dangerous. <laughs> you know, how hard could it be to take a picture of a rock, a tree, some clouds, you know, a sunset, a this, a typhoon, you know, some snakes, whatever. So I saw an image of some remote trees that only grow in two places in the world. And then I got obsessed because I absolutely thought they were the most spectacular looking trees I've ever seen in my life. I thought they were magnificent and they were endangered and in a remote area of Indonesia, difficult to get to, extremely, extremely difficult to actually navigate to where they are. And I thought, well, why not? Might as well do it, because it might be your last trip ever. Might as well do it. So I did it, got some great images. Uh, it, it was extremely difficult until my last trip, which was worse. But <laughs> it, it's one of those things that at the time you think, what was I thinking? This is so difficult and complicated. It's extreme humidity, extreme danger with mosquitoes and snakes and alligators. And, and then you're there and you go, I could be sitting at home watching football and drinking a beer. <laughs> Why am I doing this? And then when you start processing the photos and you go, oh my God, that is great. I wish I could have stayed another three, four days. I mean, that's the motivation to keep going. Right. Especially when you see great images. So when you find a location like that, how do you plan for that? Right. So let's say let's say that, that that somebody wants to go to Indonesia or they see a photo, you know, of Bhutan or any of these other amazing countries. And they're like, you know what, I want to go there. What what are the what are the steps like what Brad, tell me, like, what do you go through to start that process? 
So I called Peter. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's how I did that. Yeah. The grandfather yeah, I called of Peter, destination. Yeah. See, yeah. I'm good at some things. I'm good at that. <laughs> it's picking my ass off the ground when I'm falling down the cliff. That's what he's good at, helping me out. So, and the reason that it's better now is because of the internet. 15 years ago, you could not get to these locations because there's no way that you could get all the resources that you need to get. Okay, so for example, the trees in Indonesia. It is a plane trip, 12, 13 hours to Hong Kong, then to Singapore, three and a half, four hours. And then from Singapore to Bali, another three hours. Then a two and a half hour to Sumba, and then a three hour boat I'm out ride. already, I'm done. Three yeah. hour boat ride. And it's then you'd have to walk a mile after all of that, no air conditioning, extreme heat. I suffered heat stroke which I didn't realize at the time. And then you're there and it's an infested, you know, you have to have malaria shots, you have to have typhoid shots, you have to have yellow fever shots, you have to have all that stuff to get there to take the pictures of the trees. But when you get there, it's like an aha moment. You go, this is magnificent, and you take the pictures. In the old days, you could not organize that because you couldn't organize the transport, you couldn't organize the people to take you. We had to have a translator. A, a driver, you had to have all of that. Without the internet, you can't do it. So it takes, that took two years just to organize to get that trip in place. It's getting a lot better now. And uh, the last two trips that we did in the United States, Brad basically organized uh, because they're domestic and all the rest of it. But organizing a trip is is 80% of it. So let's let's hit this in two parts then. So we'll talk about the domestic trip here in a minute because I know you guys went and I don't know where you went, like in the in the east somewhere back east, right? Um, when you're when you're planning these trips, are you doing all of the vehicles and hotels and food and or are you hiring a local like tour guide or adventure guide or somebody to help you navigate because you have language barriers? I'm sure you have security issues when you go out of the country that. Like, there's different rules and regulations you got to think about. Are you doing all of that, or are you hire, are you finding somebody locally to do that? Uh, it's both. <clears throat> it's both. To get into, say, Papua for a stay, you needed to have a special visa from the government. You had to have an armed security guard with you at all times. You had to have a translator, a driver, and a guide to get you there. So luckily for, for, for me, I've got access to great photographers in different countries, translators, transport, and they organize everything. And you could do it on your own, but like Brad and I have talked, you could end up on one side of the mountain taking pictures that you think are fantastic, but if you connected with a local guide and knowledge, and he says, no, that's okay, but you need to be on this side because this has a waterfall and it has a volcano and it has mermaids and whatever. <laughs> you go, well, that sucked. Right. So it is right. better if you don't have months to spend, like Curry, Steve does, he goes to India, he spends three months. Okay, if you don't have that luxury, then you need to hook up with somebody that knows the local area that you're going to and can take you, and you know, not to tell you how to shoot, because we know how to shoot, but to take you to where you need to be, and if you're in a foreign country, you need someone that can translate, and make sure that the food that we're eating, and the water that we're drinking, and if anything goes wrong, uh, we have access to medication, medivac, or whatever, to, right. to make sure security is a big thing. We don't want to travel to a country, and then get, you know, kidnapped, arrested, shot at, which, you know, all, all of that for oh. trees. I'm just saying, right? All of that for trees. It's we love, worth it. We love trees. <laughs> Do we love trees? Yeah. We love trees. Yeah. Okay, so the short answer is find, find either local photographers that you can search out for or local tour guides right. or I know there's also like local groups that do big travel events like I've got a friend that travels to like Africa and she does the big safari things and she goes with a group and they organize all the food and the opportunities for you yeah so I mean that I mean that's not that's one way you can do it I personally probably would steer far away from that opportunity but and that's why I love Brad because I'm the worst to travel in a group and I've done it and I'm always the last guy to get on. I have people yelling at me. I have everybody going, how many photos do you need? I mean, you've taken 500. 
well, I need 600. And when we go, typically it's we are, we are controlling the entire thing right. so that if we want to sit there and take 5,000 photos, the person is working for us. We don't have to leave right. because we are determining what we want because what we want may not be what you know, the other 10 people want. And that's that's the issue. So let me yeah, let's, let me dive into that just a little bit. So what you're saying is instead of like finding like a tour group to go with, and right. you're subject to the whole group. Correct. You guys, you guys are saying you really like the idea of you plan it. It's your trip. That's right. So you, if you want to stay at a location all day long, stay. Right. Okay. So that that's more of a focused your right. trip intent, but I'm sure it's going to be more expensive, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, because you're not sharing the cost across. So, I mean, that's just things for somebody that who's sure. never traveled before has to consider yeah. the benefits. Well, what I would say is that if you're thinking about doing travel photography, do a couple of trips first, and then you can determine if... And some people love going on trips where the instructor says, put your tripod here, shoot over there, that's it. Some people love that. I don't love that. because You don't, I, you don't love that. I don't I mean, want any part of that. None of us love that. Um, we, we know what we're doing. We know what we want to shoot. Um, Brad's on the same page me, with me on everything and we shoot completely different stuff. Is that because he chooses to be on the same page with you or he just wants to go with you and so he <laughs> puts up with it? <laughs> well, I put him in my will and I think he's making sure that, you know, if I die along the way, he goes, hey, there's a couple of new cameras right there. He's got so, Brad, so, so tell me about, like, the local travel, right? So for somebody like what you just said, like, you know, like, you need to stretch your legs, you need to exercise a little bit in maybe a local trip to kind of find out what is good for you. And you talked about planning a local trip. Sure. So tell me a little bit about that. What, what was that trip like? And what were some of the challenges? And uh, So we've done two local trips in the last year um, and you, you know basically what the, what the way I identified these two trips is is I saw some photographs that I liked I liked the content I liked you know one being trees and one being the uh, the Oregon coast and the uh, sea stacks and you know the waterfalls and that was your latest one right that was my Oregon. latest one Correct. yeah so I, I, I saw some photos that I liked, and I identified the areas where uh, those photos were taken through, you know, maps, Google, research, whatever, you know, just right. everything you can do to try to identify where you want to go. And then uh, from that point, I, you know, we identified a date that would work for the both of us, uh, um, airfare, hotels, where we're going to stay. Um, you know, try to look at the weather a little bit, you know, so you know what you're kind of going to be faced with. I mean, there are sometimes you just can't control that stuff and you, you, you know, you've, you've set your trip dates and it, it is what it is. But, you know, just putting all that stuff together, rental cars, you know, it, it gets a little pricey, but, um, yeah, it's... It, it, but it's a vacation too, but, right? But it's a like vacation. You guys are having fun. Oh, right? absolutely. So it's not, it's not like, oh, I've got to go, I got to go take this trip and it's going to be miserable and yeah. I might take some good photos. Like you're, no. you're excited for this whole thing. So whether you're going to spend a bunch of money and get on a cruise or you're going to, you know, take a plane ride, go to another country, like this is your vacation. This is what you're planning for. Well, yeah, it, it's a little bit different than a vacation. I mean, I mean, yes and no. I mean, because we, you know, we get up at the crack of dawn. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. We're up. Yep. All morning, and depending on the weather, I mean, we could be doing a different type of photography during the middle of the day, infrared photography, and then the next thing you know, you're doing your sunset, and then maybe even some, you know, night photography, some stars and, right. and Milky Way. So, you're working, so, you're so, so, so the days are long. I mean, if you're lucky, you get five, four or five hours of sleep if you're lucky. Um, but that's what we like to do. So it's right. for me, it's very enjoyable. And and I don't have anybody, you know, in the background saying, hey, how many more pictures are you going to take? And how long are we going to do this? And can we go have dinner? And can we go do that? I mean, you know, so, you know, that's that's why I like to do it. I mean, why I like to travel on a particular trip and say, okay, hey, let's just go this, do this photography trip here. And that's all we're going to do. Right. So, okay. So you've done all the planning. You got there. So tell me about some of the dangers and I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of cueing you right here on your on your recent trip uh, with with Grandpa here with yeah. Peter. Is it? It's isn't it bad or bad Grandpa or? 
<laughs> Dave Grant. <laughs> Well, you know, this trip, uh, our recent trip to Oregon was actually really, uh, I mean, it would tax you physically. I mean, yeah. I mean, we would, uh, the, the hiking was, was incredibly difficult. It was wet, you know, it had been raining, it had been raining all week and all months before. So the ground was super slippery. So, I mean, you're literally hanging onto a rope or a, you know, a root from a tree as you're going down and, and, or sitting on your butt and scooting down and trying not to, you know, fall off the 50 foot cliff to your death. 50? Well, I, you know. 400. Yeah. <laughs> so there was, a, there was quite a few, um, scenarios, you know, I mean, I, I don't generally get too scared except for <clears throat> heights. Yeah. And, you know, there was a couple trails where fall to your death to the right, fall to your death to the left hang on to a root and, you know, 50 pound backpack on your back with your tripod. If it gets caught in a you know, tree branch, tree branch or you turn right. wrong and you hit your, <clears throat> hit your old partner and he falls to his death. And so, I, and I'm not, I'm really not exaggerating. I mean, right. you know, sometimes you see things that are exaggerated. This, this is legit. If you fall, if you misstep, yeah, you're done. So how do you, Obviously, you know when you're when you're heading into a situation like that, like you've got to decide, like is is this something that 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 I can handle that I want to do? Sure, right. Yeah. I mean, because realistically, no photo is worth your life or Absolutely worth not. a broken leg or right. anything like that. Well, maybe somebody would. Think well, that's that. easy for you to say now. Don Herzberg swims with alligators and, and sharks and crocodiles, and, crocodiles and, right. and he thinks it's fine. Um, <clears throat> but these are are these things that you guys knew ahead of time going in there that they would be that challenging. Um, I. One of us did. The other one didn't. <laughs> I, th I, I had an idea that we would have some challenging areas. I really didn't have any idea that it was going to be that severe. Okay. Um, like the very first location that we went to was a little peninsula and, and with like big, big tree roots that, you know, kind of go all down it that you had to kind of climb under or climb over to get to the location to really get the best shot. For that location we'll go to the video and, and yeah we can show you the video he's got he's got the video and I, I mean i looked at it for a second i go okay do i want to go out there do i want to risk going out there i mean it's a it's a personal decision whether you're going to do it or not i did it peter did not do it it's right. muddy it was, it, muddy. it was muddy it was slippery slippery mm -hmm. I, I mean you really i mean i actually got on my butt scooted out to the edge got right up to the edge Set up my tripod so it was kind of hanging over the edge. Made sure I had a hold of it. Put my camera on it, and you know, you was using a remote to try to get, right? You know, to get the shot. And it's raining. And, and yeah, it's, it's. So let me ask you this because I know that I've been in some situations where I look back on and I'm thinking like, what the hell was I thinking? You know, your yeah. adrenaline's going. Sure. It's super exciting. You're like, I want to do it. Would you, would you, do you think that you made the right choice going out there? Like looking back on it now? Um, it's, it's definitely questionable. <laughs> okay. Definitely, fair enough. That's, it's definitely that, questionable. So, uh, if I did it again, which I definitely plan to do again, and me, I am going again. to take a, a harness with a rope. Okay. The reason that I ask it that way is because a lot of times we see photographs. A lot of times we see somebody go out and glamorize this idea that, oh, I'm going to go climb on this rock and I'm going to jump this little gap and I'm going to get on this thing. Like, right. like I'm a hero and it's super grand. And no. like, it's, it's not always that way. And that, that I think that like for me, and it sounds like for you guys too, there's a, there's a point where I have to kind of like step back and think of previous experiences and be like, well, the last time I walked down the rock, the ocean almost ate me. Right. Maybe I shouldn't do it this time. Yeah. You know. Well, in this particular case, on this trip, there was an opportunity for me to use a rope to go down to an area where um, very, probably very few, if any, people have taken a shot. Right. The tide was right. Everything was right. But as I started to do it, I could, the rope wasn't the right kind of rope. It was stretchy. So I didn't, feel, I didn't feel like I had had it had a good grip and I couldn't really secure myself and I got down about 15 feet and I said nope and I went right back up and I said good. I'm not doing it I, good for you I, there's just no reason to risk getting hurt for right it. and that's probably yeah. why you guys can sit here today and today. tell the story and then yeah. the next time 
Now, now it's a, now it's a goal location, right? Now it's a location yeah, exactly. that okay. I'm it's a goal go. shot. But going back now, I would be more prepared. I was completely unprepared, and I went down there and I thought to myself, "I'm going home after this." And then I looked at the pictures because I cried for maybe ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Oh, it was longer. My it was longer, longer than that. It was longer. <laughs> okay, cried for half an hour, half an hour, maybe longer. Like I cried for a few hours. My legs were sore. Everything was sore. Completely unprepared. Wrong. Shoes, wrong everything. We thought we knew. You know, you have to be prepared. And one of the things was we took too much equipment down there. And we learned from that is you take two camera bodies, two lenses, and that's it. You take nothing else or one camera and one wide angle. And that's all you need for this particular shot. But knowing what we know now, we would go down. But the highlight of the trip, as far as I was concerned, was we went to take pictures of the waterfall. And we're coming back, and on the way back, instead of going right back up to where the car was parked, I accidentally went to the left because I was taking pictures down there. And I got sidetracked for maybe an hour because it was fantastic. I'm taking pictures. <laughs> and then my buddy comes along and starts yelling and scolding me. But what we didn't realize was the best images was on the second track, yeah. not the first track that we took. And I waited for a week for Brad to say, I'm sorry, that was the best part of the trip, but he kept on beating me. For... Because I understand, because he thought I might have gone headfirst into the water, which is, could have, I mean, you know, could have happened, because we're talking rough, rocks, <clears throat> water, moss, wet, cold, and isolated, and you could go in, you could be dead for a month. So, so what, what, what actually happened? <clears throat> so I, I was done. We were up in this particular area taking some stuff. I said, hey, I'm going to go back to the car. He says, okay, I'll be right there. Uh, I've traveled. I've done okay. some shooting with Peter. That's right. never a good thing. Well, as I was heading back to the car, there's a fork in the trail. So I, I go, ah, Peter wasn't paying attention when we walked up here. So I turned around, and, I, and, and the waterfalls and everything were so loud. I yell his name a couple times. I go, ah, you know. He, he's not that stupid. He'll, he'll figure this out. Well, since the direction, he's actually really good. So, <laughs> Most so I'm time. sitting in the car, and it's been 30 minutes, and, and uh, I walk back up to the location where he was supposed to be, and he's not there. Right. So now, now I'm, okay, now I'm a little worried, because, you know, he is 70, onset of dementia. There is a possibility he could wander off into this air, remote area and never come back, Right. And you would have lost your deposit on the car. And, and I didn't have your camera bag, so I wouldn't get, <laughs> I wouldn't get all the gear I needed, right? <laughs> yeah, if you're going to go into the river, make sure you leave your bag on the edge so right. Brad can come and get the equipment. That's right. I need his equipment. So, um, so what, I, what I did is uh, I had a pretty good idea because we were at the top trailhead and there was a bottom trailhead, and I figured that is obviously the next location where he would be. So over the course of probably an hour, maybe a little longer, I went back and forth between trying to trying to locate him, and I even because I and I didn't want to get on the trail and go and then you know have him be twenty right, minutes in front right, of me, right? And and then now we're both looking for each other and right. we're not finding out. So so when I went to the bottom trailhead, there were some people heading up. I said, hey, if you see an old guy that looks like he's lost and he's wandering through the jungle, please tell him to come directly down to this lower trailhead so we can we can reunite, reconnect, make, yeah, make sure course. that. Everyone's okay. So ultimately, uh, I had to go down, down to the lower trailhead. I walked up, and I was looking for him. And I, and I was hot. I was like, damn, Peter, all you got to do is come back to the car, and then we can make a decision. So I was hot, and I finally found him, and I, I, I got into him a little bit. Yep. But, but, but like you said, that was by far the best So wait, best I just want to pause on this whole thing here for a minute, right? Yeah. Like, like, but in, but in all seriousness, you know, because I've gone out. I was worried. Just to Joshua Tree, yeah. and he wanders off. So, and and the, the lesson here is that if you're going to travel with somebody, be considerate and stay together, communicate a lot, because had you slipped and fallen, it would have taken him two hours to find you, right? I mean, is that is that is that well? If the, he had slipped and fallen into the water, we would have never found him. Right, but I'm just thinking, right. never right. found him. Right. Um, but so the now other, I know why he didn't apologize to you because right. he looked for you for an hour. Oh, I did. I said I was sorry. Oh, he said he was. Oh, sorry. okay. Yeah, he, so sorry. he wanted okay. he, he wanted me to tell him I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, he owes me apology yeah, yeah. for the best shots. 
But having said that, what we did, okay. Well, we there, did, let me just say this. No phone service whatsoever. Yeah, no, right. no. So you could, there was no communication whatsoever. There. So next time we're going to get like what you and I had, the walkie-talkie thing. Yep. If you do trips like this, do the walkie-talkie thing and all the rest of it. And I was hurrying up because I knew I was on the wrong path and I knew that I was going to go down further and I'd have to go all the way back. But, you know, I was taken. He was not hurrying up. I was <laughs> hurrying. For me, I was hurrying. I could have told you that Peter would do that, right? No, that, that was, was the only good. time. That was the only time. So what, what we had to do after that is we had to run down to phone service because we were some, making some plans and waiting for some phone calls uh, so for some verification of where we were going to go next. Right. And then, and then, because it was such a good spot, we drove back up another back up 12 miles, and we spent, what, Four hour, another three three hours there, taking photographs, and yeah, it was it was spectacular. It was, spectacular. It was just it was just mesmerizing how absolutely gorgeous and beautiful it was. It was just stunning to be there. Definitely, we, we could have spent three days just in that one location, but we timed everything and went through in the end. And and one of the things that I learned was, you really need to have the right gear, the right equipment. And do not take too much camera gear with you. Limit right. yourself. Limit yourself to one or two lenses maximum. Make sure you've got filters. Make sure you've got tripods. Make sure you've got all of those things. Because I always do it. I take way too much equipment. Yep. Because I'm thinking that I'm in Burma. I'm going to need the 70 to 200. I'm going to need the 200, 600. I'm going to need this and this. Well, you know what? Hold all yeah. that for the next segment is going to be all about gear. Yeah. But to kind of wrap up this little segment about, you know, the travel and things like that, uh, a tip would you suggest from the traveling type of thing that you would say to somebody like, this is what you need to do? For me, on this scenario, what we were just talking about, make sure you have a good set of uh, ground rules like, okay, we're going to go photograph. I don't care how long you take. I don't care what you do. However, if you go to a different location aside from where we where we can have visual contact with each other or you know at least hear each other when you're yelling, make sure you reconnect. Hey, I'm going down this way. I'll meet you at this location in right. this amount of time. I completely agree. When you travel and you're traveling with a group of other people, you need to let everybody know where everybody is just in case. My tip is just be careful. Don't do anything stupid.